Now let's get right to some stock picks in the healthcare and tech space. Doug Flynn, co-founder of Flynn Zito Capital Management, is joining us. It's great to see you. Thanks for coming in. Great to be here. So first, let's just get your, you know, bird's eye view here on the sure. market. Yeah, I think that uh, you know we're going to get this Fed rate cut, whether we like it or not. It's coming through, and uh, that's going to help propel the market a, a little bit more. But it's setting us up really well for earnings in the third and fourth quarter to be all-time high, which is going to mean the market's going to go even further. Yeah, so when you say third and fourth quarter all-time high, do you mean both for stocks and for earnings? Yes, and usually as earnings go, the market will go. And so, right. like right now, I think those stocks are going to come through with their earnings regardless of the Fed rate cut. I really don't know that it's needed. But uh, now the market's priced that in and it wants it. So without it, that would be a negative. So we're going to get that. But even without that or with it, Things are setting up really, really well as the as the tax cuts kick in and these companies get to spend a lot of that money that mm -hmm. really hasn't worked its way into the earnings just yet. You're but not it's spooked, going to. huh? You're not spooked at all by you know the trade war or global growth slowing or things like that. I think you know the U.S. is still the place to be at, right. at this point, and so while there are opportunities overseas, I think um, we're, we've got a lot of opportunity here right here in the U.S. So that's. I mean, in focused. fact, do you think that you should buy the dip? I mean, if like for example, the Fed does cut on Friday right on the, the 31st yes um, that the market might sell off yes it would. Is it gonna be a dramatic sell-off I think there'll be a couple of percent I don't maybe a little bit more than a typical day you would buy on that I day. would I would use it as an opportunity for some stocks usually what you try to do is you have some stocks sort of on the side that you're waiting for an entry point right Keep those ready and then that would be your point to get into some of those things that well, sure present an opportunity I, I, I get it I understand so you think that the, obviously you sound so optimistic you said that you just like as a core industrial UPS why I do like that as a core because if you look at UPS, I think a lot of companies rely on technology first. They're, they're the type of company that has all of the logistics in place, and then they've added on this amazing technology. Uh, and people don't think of them as a technology company, but they've really implemented technology well. The other big thing is if you look at the percentage of online shopping and the move from 10% of all sales probably up to 20 or 30 over the next you know, mm -hmm. 10 years or so, Who's going to benefit from all the deliveries? I know at my house, what shows up every day from UPS, it's only going to get more and more as more shopping continually goes uh, towards that. And the big benefit are companies like UPS. So, right. So I think you know it's funny because Goldman Sachs said that UPS and FedEx are just too cheap not to buy. I mean, exactly. they, they're, Plus the they're on board you have with the you. great yield. If you think, oh yeah, you have almost a four percent dividend yield. Where are you going to get that uh, relative to the to the Treasury with a stock that has some pretty good upside? Yeah, let's get to uh, healthcare because you have two names in healthcare. One that's a higher risk and one that's a lower risk. So that's right. good because you're sort of uh, feeding to everybody's risk appetite. Some people want to really get in there, and exactly. others would just like a little taste of a exactly. chance. Exactly. So you, chance to make something. You take a look at healthcare and you say, okay, of all the S and P sectors, it's the worst performing one, right? So we kind of look at that and say that might be an opportunity. But within there, there there's there are opportunities, and certainly in healthcare, I think people have overplayed healthcare being a negative with all the uncertainty with with health care right. plans. And the group's been beaten down, yeah. <clears throat> it has. But within there, there's two ways to go. And so if you're a little bit of a lower risk investor, there's ways to play that. And if you want it a little bit more high octane, you can you can play that as well. So that's typically how, how we focus is take a look at two different options. So let's talk about Centene because that's your low risk name. You said it's closer to the 52 week low than it is exactly. to the 52 week high. So that's Why? one of the things that you're looking at is you're looking at uh, companies that uh, maybe haven't run their, the, themselves all the way up to their all time high mm -hmm. while the market's at its all time high. And that company does a lot of they, they basically sell health plans and they, they have a lot to do with Medicaid and delivery of, of that to, to veterans. And, and they've taken over a couple of companies. So it's a very stable, growing company that through acquisition and internally has grown. So it's, it's, that's why it's a lower risk play right. is that Medicaid spending is not going to go down. And who are the benefits of that? And no matter what plan, if they do Medicare for all, it's only going to increase. So those are the types of companies that you can get involved with that are health care in that manner. And it's up 1% <clears> today. How about Regeneron? So Regeneron is completely opposite. That's a biotech that's a, a little bit of a higher octane yeah. way to play it. They've got some great stocks, uh, some great um, dr drugs in cancer and asthma. Um, but the biggest reason I like them also on the lower end of their 52 week is, bec is because they have over 20, um, 20 um, drugs in the pipeline that are through clinical testing. That's a right. I mean, it's down 20 percent yep. this this year. So it hasn't I mean, moved in five years. But if you look at how it's set up now, when do you want to buy, though, right? right? When it's screaming high 
or when ahead of that. All and right. This is one of those opportunities if you have a little bit more risk to you. Right. If you want to, if you want to be a risk taker, it's down 20 exactly. percent. They have 20 drugs in the pipeline, That's and great. maybe it has some upside potential. Another one in the high risk mm -hmm. category that you have in tech, mm -hmm. in particular, pure storage. So tell right. us about that one. So pure storage is is uh, definitely one of the highest risk ones you can play. It has almost two times the risk of the market. But what that plays into is if you think about all the storage out there that's going more towards flash drives right. and into the cloud. The direct beneficiary of that as we move away from other types of storage is that company. And so if you think about the whole entire movement as that's gotten cheaper and cheaper, who's going to make the most money from that kind of a move? It's a company like that. And so that's another one that has a lot of upside and probably, um, you know, you have to pick your points. And this is not one that's a sort of buy and hold forever. It's a right. trade or play. Um, but if you enter in, just, you know, buckle up and, and watch it. And if you start to make some money on these things, you probably should take a little profit off the table. I mean, don't get greedy, right? Exactly. Pick your, having an exit strategy is the most important thing that people don't have. Everyone right. knows how to pick good things to buy. It's, uh, well, when do you sell? And so I always say begin with the end in mind and say know how much you want to make with that. Take a little bit of money off the what table. What do you think is fair? 10%? I think 20. you're going to get much more of a stock like that. So yeah. uh, the way I would like to do it is, you know, at 20% increments, and then maybe one day you get enough out of it where you pull all of your investment out, and then you're just playing with the house's money. Right. I know you had New Relic as your low-risk tech pick. It's glad to see you. Doug Flynn, co-founder of Flynn Zito Capital Management. It's great to see you. Thanks you so too. much. Coming